Welcome to Morningside Uniting Church Sunday service. Every time we gather to worship and praise the name of the Lord, we light this candle to acknowledge Jesus Christ, the light of the world, is with us. Now let us worship God. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in God. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before God. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Now let us pray. Most wonderful God, it is you who inspires every novel thought and every loving deed. When we draw near to you in worship, save us from wanderings of mind and coldness of heart, that with a deep longing for more truth and a warm desire for more love, we may know you, embrace you, and worship you in the incarnate life of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in singing our opening hymn, Father, Lord of all creation. Now let us sing together.
Now let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Now let us confess together. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left and done those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Now hear the good news. This is the best of all. When we are empty, God fills us. When we are disheartened, God is compassionate. When we are wounded, God brings healing. When we confess our sin, God forgives. Therefore, in Christ, through Christ, and because of Christ, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Now let us sing our thanksgiving hymn, O Jesus, I have promised. Now let us sing together. Today's Bible reading is from the journey and the story of Joshua, chapter 8, verses 30 through 35. Now let us hear the living word of the Lord. 
Then Joshua built on Mount Ebal an altar to the Lord, the God of Israel, as Moses, the servants of the Lord, had commanded the Israelites. He built it according to what is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of uncut stones, on which no iron tool had been used. On it they offered to the Lord burnt offerings and sacrificed fellowship offerings. There, in the presence of the Israelites, Joshua wrote on stones a copy of the law of Moses. All the Israelites, with their elders, officials, and judges, were standing on both sides of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, facing the Levitical priest who carried it. Both the foreigners living among them and the native-born were there. Half of the people stood in front of Mount Gerizim, and half of them in front of Mount Eva. As Moses, the servants of the Lord, had formally commanded when he gave instructions to bless the people of Israel. Afterward, Joshua read all the words of the law, the blessings and the curses, just as it is written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses has commanded that Joshua did not read to the whole assembly of Israel, including the women and children and the foreigners who lived among them. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now let us pray as we listen for the words of the Lord for today. Holy and gracious God, may your Holy Spirit give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that with the eyes of our hearts enlightened, we may know the hope to which Christ has called us, the riches of his glory inheritance among us, and the greatness of his power for those who believe. In Jesus' name, Amen. Last Tuesday afternoon, I received a COVID-19 vaccination shot, AstraZeneca. Oh, that hurt the longest needle I've ever had. Anyway, after waiting 15 minutes, I was told to go home. I was all fine, but as I, were to, as I was about to go to sleep, all of a sudden, I started having headache. So, as several church members already told me to take some Panadols, I took some and tried to sleep again. But I couldn't because of all the negative rumors against the vaccination programs, blood clotting and other side effects that made people hospitalized. These kinds of negative thoughts kept rushing into my mind. So I kept asking myself, what if what if, what if? So I had to get up and pray to God for myself. God, save my life. If you want me to, I'll go to Myanmar, India, or Congo. I'll go wherever you send me. Just save my life. It was real prayer begging God to spare my life from death and make my eyes open in the morning to face another day. The next morning arrived safely and I was okay. So I thanked God for saving my life. I even went to the gym in the afternoon. I was totally fine. Anyway, while I was thanking God for my physical well-being, I started thinking about my spiritual well-being. It's a career hazard, isn't it, as a preacher? Whatever happens to me, I am inspired to turn the experience into a message for Sunday. So I'm preaching to you this morning about my experience. That's exactly what I try to do by asking myself, when my spiritual life is not going okay, do I ever experience this kind of sleepless night? 
So out of desperation, do I pray to God for saving my soul as much as I care for my physical well-being? When I'm hungry, I look for food to eat. When I'm thirsty, water to drink. But when my soul is in hunger, do I look for the bread of heaven? When my spirit is in thirst, do I look for the streams of water of life? Questions for my spiritual well-being kept coming back to me. Am I really sensitive enough for my spiritual well-being as much as my physical well-being in the world? If I could put these two on a scale, which one would become heavier and more important to me? Matthew chapter 16 verse 26 says, What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? As much as we need vaccinations for our physical body and well-being, we must have the real spiritual vaccination every day for our heart, our mind, and our soul to immune us from any worldly diseases and ungodly temptations. Indeed, it is much needed and required in our daily life so that we may face another morning to give thanks to God. Don't you think God gives us every day, not just to enjoy the day, but to live as Christians? Don't you agree every time we face challenges and difficulties, God sees how we choose to handle those given situations as His own faithful people or not? What I'm saying is that as much as we care for our body, we must take the best care of our soul and spirit in the Lord so that God may know that we are His own people and children forever. After Exodus, Israel people walked through the wilderness for 40 years. During their journey, they were physically and spiritually challenged, discouraged over and over again. Because God was testing them to know whether they had real faith and trust in God or not. So book of Exodus chapter 15 says that there the Lord issued a ruling and instruction for them and put them to test. He said, if you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in His eyes, if you pay attention to His commands and keep all His decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. And again, Exodus chapter 16. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. The leader Moses knew God was testing Israel over and over again. So in Exodus chapter 20 verse 20, he encouraged the Israel people every time they were facing enemies. He said, do not be afraid. God has come to test you. So the fear of God will be with you to keep you from sinning. What Moses was saying is that God was behind all the tests Israel people had to go through. So as long as they kept their faith and trust alive and active in God, God would bring them home the eternal, the end of their long journey, the eternal place. Of God. So in Deuteronomy chapter 8, towards the end of 40 years in the wilderness, Moses summarized the relationship between God and Israel like this. Remember 
how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. He humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known. To teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. So whichever situation we are in now, sickness, poverty, loneliness, being misunderstood, or any kinds of broken relationships with God or others, as we take care of our physical body, our physical needs, we must look into our spiritual emptiness and spiritual brokenness in our life at the same time. We all are made in the likeness and image of God. The reason Lord Jesus Christ has forgiven our sin and given us a new life in him and the abiding Holy Spirit has rested upon us. So we are perfect because we have life in God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So in order for us to live as his own people in the world, this is what we are to do every day as God commands us according to today's reading from Joshua 8. We must climb on either Mount Gezerim or Mount Ebal to proclaim the words of God to ourselves. Either words of blessings or the words of curses. Let me explain to you what I mean by that. When Israel people who just crossed the Jordan River and arrived in the land of Canaan, God commanded them to climb up on both mountains, Mount Gerizim, and to proclaim the blessings of God, while Mount Ebal for the curses of God. Not to those foreign people living in the Canaan, but to themselves the entire Israel people. So they proclaimed into their own ears the blessings and the curses of God so that they may hear and choose which way to follow. Do you want to be blessed? Then choose God's way. Do you want to be cursed? Then choose Godless way. That's what they proclaimed to themselves. Today, this is what God commands us to proclaim and beyond. Hear my words of blessings and curses, then choose which way you want to follow. So, which word of God and which way of God do you choose today to proclaim to yourself and which way do you choose to follow? And which mountain are you climbing on today? Every night before I go to bed, I take a vitamin C tablets. 1,000 milligrams at least. Then, what's my spiritual vitamin C that I take every time? It is the blessing words of God that I proclaim and choose every day. Don't forget, when we are blessed, then we can bless others. When we are loved, we love others. And when we know that our sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus, we forgive and reconcile with others. So proclaim and choose blessing love and reconciliation of God in our Lord Jesus Christ. To God be the glory forever and evermore. Amen. It's time for us to pray for one another. And also, as you see on the screen, let us continue to pray for one another. 
Now let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Now let us sing our closing hymn, Here I Am, Lord. As a people and children and servants of God, go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage, hold fast at that which is good, render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, 
honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And as we do so, God the Father make you holy in his love. God the Son enrich you with his grace. God the Holy Spirit strengthen you with joy. The Lord bless you and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Now let us bless each other. God bless you. Thank you.